I think I've covered everything, but questions. Yes, ma'am. How, how would you deal with somebody if they died in Europe or abroad? When, when people, we have what we call away from home protection, and it's a very good question. We have a, what we call away from home protection. It's not just what legacy has. Most every funeral home offers away from home protection. And what that does is it's, it's not an insurance policy, but you pay one time fee. Most generally that fee is $225. And that is with the person for their life. That fee is for life. And the only thing that would trigger that is if the person died 100 miles away from home. So if somebody, a lot of times we protect ourselves when we travel abroad for medication, for hospital care, and even bringing the person back if they <coughs> pass in a foreign country or on a cruise, and it happens all the time. This particular policy will pay all of the services according to the pre-need plan. So if somebody were to pass in Germany or Italy or England and they contracted with the funeral home here, this organization knows that. They know if the person selected cremation, they're not going to bring that person back here in a casket or a container. They're going to cremate them in the country where they died and ship the cremated remains back. If the person selected a burial with full body casketed remains, they will also do that. They will do the embalming in the foreign country. They will place that person in a shipping container that meets the standard of the United States to receive human remains, okay? Which means it has to be a metal container. It has to be signed and stamped by the embassy in that foreign country. And the airfare coming back is all included in that fee of $225. What happens to the money that you've funded here in the event there's service required in Aruba, the money is returned to the family. The money is returned to the family because an insurance company, a third party, has paid those expenses. So that money is paid back to the estate or the next of kin. There was another question. Yes, ma'am. Similar question. The same applies if you say, for instance, were to pass away in California. As long as you're a hundred miles away from your residence, all right? So if you go from here to Tallahassee, we're probably not going to call upon that insurance. We're going to send our own men to Tallahassee. However, if you're in Atlanta, Georgia, or Louisiana, or Texas, we're going to see to it that the, that insurance company makes the transfer into a funeral home that is one of their recognized providers. And they will perform the service according to the contract or the prearrangement that you have made here with the funeral home. And they're gonna to wanna to see documentation to that effect. They're gonna to wanna to see the documentation. Yes, ma'am. That was my same question. Okay. If, if this policy covered domestic as uh, as well it as covers anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. Are there any questions about that? Because that's an important part of this. What about if you passed on a cruise ship? Every single cruise, they're not going to put the cruise ship into the next port. Not everybody knows this, and we don't want to know it when we're getting on a cruise ship. <laughs> a lot of them don't know. So. A lot of cruise, and it does happen. I know, I heard it. <laughs> All right, it happens a lot. They have a facility on the cruise ship. They have containers on a cruise ship. The same way any funeral home would have containers. 
And essentially, they place the person in refrigeration. And when they get into a port, they will have a funeral home, accept the remains, and then this insurance policy would, would, would take part. But it's a very good question, and it happens a lot. It happens a lot. Yes, ma'am. Okay, prepaid uh, contract here. Happen, death happens elsewhere, but you want to be um, returned to a home base that's not Naples. Okay, so you're living here, you don't have that policy, you want a funeral home in Boston, okay? The funeral home in Boston is going to be contacted by us, and we're going to say that Mrs. Jones has a prearranged, prepaid contract in here, in Naples, with us that was funded in, in 2014. Now, will you accept the funds that we collected from that family under her pre-need agreement to satisfy the funeral bill? And my next statement will be, if you do not, do you, do you know of a funeral home within your community that will? The conversation won't even go that far. They will say, by all means, we'll take that. It's a professional courtesy. We would do that as well. We would do that as well. Okay, even if the place of death is not here in Collier, if it's um, California. Yeah, so we're, going to, we're going to get a call. You're gonna have that wallet card. Somebody is gonna have the wallet card besides you. Because if you don't have it on your person, Somebody's going to be notified, a child, a personal representative will have that information. They're going to call us straight away. We're going to call a funeral home. We're going to institute the call from one establishment to another. The family's not involved. We'll ask the family, who would you like to use in Lansing, Michigan? Jones Funeral Home. We're going to call Jones Funeral Home and we're going to cover that same conversation. We have a pre-need contract here that was funded in 2014 and the person wanted a direct cremation taken from the place of death, met, got all the vital information, cremated and returned the cremated remains to the family. And we have $970, by the way, which is our charge, in our account to pay for that. Will you accept that? If not, I'm going to call Smith Funeral Home. The conversation won't go to Smith. They're going to do that. Yes, another one. Earlier you mentioned about the pre-need sit-down contact. Right. Um, authorization uh, verified to make the arrangement. What would be the authorization routine for a single person, no children? Single person, no children. No parents. No parents, no one here. The purchaser is the person who makes the plans from themselves, which is the beneficiary. And the state gives an awful, the state of Florida gives an awful lot of weight to that. Because if a niece or a nephew surfaced and said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't want her to be cremated, okay? I want her to be buried. I would say, with all due respect, I understand your personal beliefs. However, that was not the beliefs that she had. That was not what she wanted to have. And I have to proceed accordingly. And if she says to me, if you do that, I will sue you, okay? And she may try, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the local medical examiner here in town, and I'm going to tell the medical examiner of my problem with a niece that surfaced, will you please help me to get a ruling from a judge in Collier County? 
Now the judge makes a ruling, and they're going to say, Michael, Glenn, show me the pre-need contract. He is going to make a ruling to uphold your decision, and everything that comes out of a judge's mouth is law. So that niece or nephew that surfaced, okay, no matter how me well-meaning they were, that's their belief. Your belief is this, I want cremation. The judge will, will uphold that. Yes, sir. Mike, we have a very helpful process here. Right. Have you seen it? Uh, yeah. The end of year dossier? No, I have not. Well, it's, it, it guides us down a path that okay. led me to, I'm from Connecticut. Okay. And I have a funeral home. In fact, we have our names on a tombstone. Okay. The date we were born but not the date we left. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, we know where we're headed to a, to a family plot in Connecticut. And I've been doing some prearranging with a funeral home up there. Okay. Spent our life in Absolutely. Would you, be, would you have a service that would allow me to sit down and just coordinate this intelligently with you? We would. What we would and we've worked with other funeral homes that people want to come in and say, I've always lived in Groton, Connecticut, yeah. or New London, or Hartford, and we want XYZ funeral home. We have that conversation with that funeral home in your presence that, right at that moment. We have Mr. Jones here, and Mr. Jones would like to be returned to your funeral home at the time of need. And we're here to make that transfer possible. Will you work with us? Okay? Now we're working with that funeral home from one funeral home to another funeral home. And we do that all the time. <laughs>